So first step you would just chuck the front wheels, then you would loosen up those wheel nuts. So then when the car is finally in the air, it's going to be easy to remove them. Remove all those uh, uh, differential cover bolts, uh, they were sitting there quite tight. I got them loose, so now I'm going to use my electric tool to get them out quicker. Alright, so bolts removed, and now we're going to do some hammering action. So now I can use a screwdriver and just, just pry it from the bottom. I'm going to do it slowly, so I don't make a mess here. It's a good idea to leave one of the top bolts still there, so it's going to hold your cover. Excellent. Alright, so as you can see I've taken the cover off, uh, I'm going to let it drip. Okay, now you're going to have to move um, the whole carrier into a position where that little securing bolt is exposed. So just turn the wheel, or if you've taken the wheel off, just turn the drum. And now you're going to wipe this off here, because obviously when it's all oiled up, it might slip and then you're going to destroy the head of that bolt. So this is a quarter inch, 12 point little spanner. Alright, so get the pin out. Excellent. So if I turn the wheel again, this will expose this pin here. You push it from the top and it nicely comes out. And now I'm going to remove the rear wheels. And now do the same on the other side. Now remove the both drums. And uh, you're going to have to push this axle inside. And by the way, the other one too. And that will release your um, C-clips. Alright, so as you can see, those are the ends of both axles. This is the left one, this is the right one. I'm now going to push them in and that should release the C-clips. There we go, so both C-clips came out, and now just use a magnet or whatever you've got there to take them out. Okay, the first one. And the second one. Okay man, so now we've got to remove the axles. Do it carefully. And now try to support it from the bottom because it's going to be sliding on that seal. So you don't want to damage it. Excellent. First one out. Now do the same on the other side. Alright, so taking off the carrier now. Uh, you absolutely have to be sure that you're going to be putting those caps and bolts exactly the same way it came out. So it's a good idea to take a picture of this. And bottom. And same here. Alright, if they don't want to move, just give them a, a little tap with a hammer and they'll come out as the first one and as the second one. I, I think this is going to be the hardest part of the job or one of the hardest just removing that carrier and I think it just won't budge so I'm going to have to pry it with a crowbar okay people so this carrier sits there mega mega tight you're not going to be able to remove it just by pulling by hand. So you've got to pry out and what I'm going to do is I'm using this extension so I've put it inside there and obviously you need some sort of fulcrum which is uh, delicate because you don't want to mess around, you don't want to mess up the surface of that uh, dip cover. And now you just keep tapping on it until it comes out and be careful because it might just 
Okay, it's coming out. Alright, so as you can see, it has come out quite a lot actually. I uh, might be able to just get it out now. There we go. Just make sure the shims don't drop. Okay. Obviously you have to keep them on their sides. So this came from the right hand side. This came from the left hand side. So I'm going to keep them like that. Okay, so here we have the carrier taken out. Now it's removing the ring gear. Okay, so getting the ring gear bolts off. Alright folks, so I have a little issue here, getting the ring gear of this carrier isn't easy. So I guess just a few taps with a mallet is the way to do it. There we go. And now it's the hard part, because obviously the clutches and spider gears are preloaded. So you need to uh, squeeze them to be able to turn them. So I'm going to use those bolts. So those two are different length as you can see. One is a bit longer, the other one is a bit shorter. And that's because that bit here needs a longer bolt and that one needs a shorter one. And the length I've got is... So, okay, so the longer one is 100 and... 17 millimeters and the shorter one is 97 millimeters right so just chuck those bolts in with the washer on the other end okay there we go it grabbed it and just make sure this sits straight so loosen it up a bit there we go, that sits somewhat straight. Now another one. So this is one end, this is the other end, and that is what that's what it looks like inside. But what you're doing is you're grabbing the one inside there, and then you're just gonna put some load on it. And then you're going to do the same with the other side. So just get it tight. Okay, just a bit tight. Alright, so you could continue doing it manually using uh, two spanners, but I'm going to use a nut buster because this is going to this is going to make my job a lot easier. Okay, and now the other side. Now I'm getting slight movement here, you see? And there we go. The first washer comes out. Look at that, second washer comes out. As you can see, there's a lot of play now in there. So now, if you grab this brass driver and a hammer, you're going to be able to drive out those spider gears. It will eventually, you see this, how it's coming out? Every time you're hammering this gear down, this will pull this gear that way. Okay, it's really, really close. There we go. And you do the same on the other side. There we go. And just one more shot. And it comes out. There we go. So both are out. I'm 
And what, what have we got here now is those side gears which simply come out by pulling them out. Nice and easy. Okay, so the first one is out. And now the second one is out too. And what you've got to do now is get your clutches out. So the clutches are inside there and they're held in place by those pins here. If you simply grab your brass driver and push on it. There we go, those are your clutches. And those are your clips holding the clutches, which I'll show you again in a moment. You can hold your hand inside so you can grab the clutches and keep tapping on it. There you go, they come out. Now pay attention to those clips. You see how those clips are warped and beaten up? See, they've got those wear marks. Those are not good anymore. Let's have a look at the plates. So you've got two types of plates. You've got the round plates and you've got those plates with those ears. So you put them in alternately. And you can see those clutches have this coloration, which I would assume is from heat buildup, and this is why they get worn out. Next step is to inspect your carrier, because sometimes those worn out uh, clips will be leaving wear marks inside there in the carrier. So let's just magnify, let's have a look what we've got there. So as you can see, this here looks pretty nice and smooth. Okay, so now you just line up the clutches and use the new clips and put them on. If not, you could use a tad of grease and grease will keep bastards. Brilliant! Sit really well. Alright then, so as you can see I've got a string here and that way I can turn it upside down and the gears won't fall out. Okay, come on, come on, come on. And there we go. We're in. Okay, so to put those uh, satellites inside the carrier now, it's going to be the same trick with the bolts as we've done before. Okay, so let's apply some preload now. And hopefully now I'll be able to uh, roll those spider gears in. Now the important part now is to align them correctly. Alright, so you've got to keep them in the same sort of line, right? They can't be like this or like this. They've got to be aligned correctly. Alright, so let's see what's happened here. Um, so I've put that gear in there and then I gave it a few taps on that planetary gear. So it moved this gear into the carrier, so now it sits there tight. So, a little update. So I was able to put that one in deep enough, so it now stays in place. And all I'm, have to go, uh, and all I'm gonna have to do now is uh, look after that one. So you align it with the other one making sure that the pin will go for both and we continue hammering. Alright, so let's check the progress. This one is as far in, that one's getting in too and always make sure they're lined up correctly so the pin will go for both. Alright, keep hammering, getting really close now. I've put this carrier in the freezer for like an hour because it seems to me trying to slide on this ring gear on it will be a problem.
beautiful. Nice and easy. Excellent. Right, let's just align those holes. And let's just grab it with those bolts here. Okay, we've got them snug, so now we need to torque it up to 70 foot-pounds. So I'm going to go with two stages. I'm going to go with 30 foot-pounds first and then 70 foot-pounds in the second. So now this of course is a very good idea to replace your wheel bearings and seals. You know, they're cheap and you're there, so why not? For that you're going to need the hammer, slide hammer, with those fancy little bits here. So what you do is you basically put it inside, attach it, and then you keep hammering until it comes out. There we go. Alright, so now once you've got the bearings out, just give it a nice clean here. Now we want to put a tad of grease here. Now we take the new wheel bearing, the side with uh, the lettering outside. In there. All right, that's it. I'm flush. Now we'll do the same on the other side. All right, peeps. Now I'm gonna put the caps on. And very important. It's got to go the same way as it came out. Cool. So firstly, just get it snug with the ratchet. And then we're going to torque it down in a minute. All right, I forgot I've got this securing pin inside. So I'm going to remove it now. Okay, so at that point, we can put the axles in. Right, before I put the axles in, I'll just pour some oil on this bearing and I'll just move it around. Now do the same on the other side. Okay, so putting your axles in. First of all, make sure you're putting the right axle in the right, right side because they're different lengths. You can also inspect your splines. This is a good time to do that. And then when you're doing it, support the bottom of the axle not to slide on that seal here <laughs> there we go it went in and push it all the way <laughs> you can put your sick clips back on first one And that's the second one. Okay, so as you can see, both axles of the C-clips are in. And now it's time for the pin. All right, guys, so I've got the pin inside. And now you would have to put the little screw at the bottom here. Okay, okay folks, so now the pin goes in. You can put a tiny amount of Loctite on it. Okay, that's it. I can feel from the resistance. Now put the drums on. Now the wheel goes on. Now, extremely important part, those um, 
bearing caps have to be torqued down to um, 60 foot pounds. <sighs> Come on. Yeah, that's 60. That's 60. And that one. <sighs> that's 60. And that one, just to check it, 60 foot pounds. All right, now you've got to clean the surface here around to make sure you get a good seal. I'm gonna use RTV, you can use a gasket, whatever you've got. Uh, obviously all that stuff there has to be cleaned with a brake cleaner, I've done that before. Haven't filmed it because I'm tired and I forgot. And then you just put the cover on and put the new oil in. To remove the gasket, remains of RTV really. I'm gonna use this stuff, it's really good. And uh, the gasket scraper. Really nice. There we go. Alright, so that's what I've got. I'm going to try at least to apply a somewhat even bead of RTV. So RTV is getting a bit gummy now, which is a good moment to put the diff cover on. So if you just get one of the screws ready. If I get one of them here, and they have one maybe here, then I'll get one here at the bottom. So now it's not going to fall. Right, man, so now just torque it up to 35 foot pounds. Alright, so now it's time to put your oil in and obviously for the LSD um, Dana 35 you want to start with uh, LSD additive so I've got my 120 mils of it here. Alright, that's cool. So now we're going with the oil. In my case it's going to be 75W90 GL5 gear oil. When it starts dripping and coming out from here then you know the level is correct. Right man, so when you're full of oil, just put the plug on and then you're just good for a ride. And no more nasty noises from your differential. Thanks for watching, till next time.